Hey everybody, this is example number 11 for steel design for tension members. The problem statement that we have is we have an 8 inch diameter standard pipe that's full of water and it's supported at 10 foot intervals by a threaded bent rod as shown in the figure below. And we're asked to determine the required rod size per LRFD and ASD if the rod material is A36 steel. Here's our figure of our threaded bent rod that's used as a pipe support and the pipe is shown in red and we have to find the size the required size per LRFD and ASD of this rod. Before we proceed to the solution just want to let you guys know that this example is brought to you by Bentley And Bentley Systems is a software development company that supports the professional needs of engineers, designers, planners, and contractors responsible for creating and managing infrastructure. Bentley has tailored software applications for design, modeling, and analysis of buildings, structures, bridges, plants, and more. I have used Bentley's software and I can say that the software was very easy to use and the support that came with it was impeccable. Whenever I needed help, the Bentley team was there for me. And here's their website, it's Bentley.com. There's a link to Bentley.com and some of their YouTube channels within the description part of this video. So if you're a student and want to get familiar with the software and get a leg up over your colleagues during your job search, academic licensing is available through Bentley. And if you're a practicing engineer and you want to sharpen up your skills, they have a bunch of videos and webinars on their website as well as their various YouTube channels. So please check them out. And now coming back to our pipe support problem. The first thing we need to do is calculate the weight of the pipe itself. So we have a standard 8 inch pipe which means that the OD, the outside diameter is 8.625 inches and the wall thickness is 0.322 inches. So from part one of the manual, table 1-13, the unit weight of the pipe can be found and it's equal to 28.6 pounds per foot. Next, we're gonna calculate the water weight. So the weight of the water can be found and the formula for that will be equal to the internal cross-sectional area multiplied by the unit weight of water. So pi times di squared and di is an internal diameter divided by 4 times the unit weight of water. So here's what we have. We have pi times di internal diameter is equal to the OD minus 2 times the wall thickness and then we're gonna square this whole value divided by 4 and then we're also gonna divide by 144 inches per foot squared to get it into the correct units and then multiply by the unit weight of water which is approximately 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. So our unit weight of water, uh, so our weight of water per unit length is equal to 21.68 pounds per foot. So the total weight will be equal to the weight of the water plus the weight of the pipe and that's going to be, that is 28.6 pounds per foot plus 21.68 pounds per foot equals 50.28 pounds per foot. So after this, we need to find the load that's acting at each support. And the way we do that is we take this value of 50.28, which is the unit weight, the, the unit, uh, the weight per unit length. And we, when we multiply it by the interval, because the supports are spaced at 10 foot intervals, so we just take the total weight per unit length, multiply it by the length interval, and so we get 50.28 pounds per foot times 10 feet, and so the load acting at each support is equal to 502.8 pounds. And now we need to calculate the load on each rod. So let's take a look at this figure. It's this free body diagram. So we have two rods and they're both in tension and we have a downward force of 502.8 pounds. 
So if we sum the forces in the vertical direction, it's going to be equal to 2t minus 502.8 pounds. So t equals 251.4 pounds. That's the tension load in the rod. And so that's how we got this 251.4 pounds. Once we've calculated the tension load in each rod, we can go ahead and begin to use LRFD and try to find the required size. So the first thing we need to do in LRFD solution approach is to calculate the factored load. And this is based on ASCE 7 load combinations. ASCE load 7 load combinations. And this is load combination 1 because we only have a dead load. And so it's going to be equal to 1.4 times dead load. So that's equal to 1.4 times T, or 251.4 pounds. And that's equal to 351.96 pounds, uh, also equal to 0 0.35196 kips. Now we need to calculate the required area of our thread of our rod. And so based on AISC equation J3-1, the tension, the tensile strength of a threaded rod can be given by this equation. The nominal strength, the nominal tensile strength is equal to Fn times AB. And Fn is a nominal tensile stress, and AB is a nominal unthreaded body area, the cross-sectional area. So since this is a nominal, uh, nominal strength, to get the design strength, we just multiply both sides by the resistance factor. Okay, so resistance factor here and here. So let's consider the right side of this equation. So resistance factor times Fn times AB. So what is Fn? Fn, again, is a nominal tensile stress nt nominal tensile stress and we can get that from table j3.2 in the AISC manual okay so let's clarify even more so the resistance factor for LRFD for this uh, for this tensile rupture case for this limit state of tensile rupture is equal to 0 0.75 and then FNT for threaded parts in table J3 dash, table J3.2 is equal to 0 0.75 times the ultimate tensile strength. And then we multiply it by AB. So here's our resistance factor, FNT and AB. And so we set this equal to the factored tensile loading. This is our design strength. The factored tensile loading that we got which is 1.4 times dead load. So using this equation, we're going to solve for AB. And so we rearrange this equation. So the required cross-sectional area is equal to the factor tensile load divided by 0 0.75, which is the resistance factor, and then also divided by 0 0.75 times the ultimate strength, tensile strength. This is FNT. So we plug in the numbers and we find that the required cross-sectional area is equal to 0 0.0108 inches squared and we set this equal to pi d squared over 4 which is a formula for the cross-sectional area and then we re rearrange this equation to solve for d the diameter so the diameter is equal to the, uh, the, the square root of 4 times ab divided by pi so 4 times 0 0.0108 inches squared divided by pi so D equals 0.1173 inches. And so for design's sake, although there is no specification requirement, a common practice is to use a minimum diameter of 5 eighths inch. So we're going to use 5 eighths inch diameter threaded rod uh, for this LRFD case. And, and so 5 eighths inch that's the minimum it's a good practice it's a common practice to use this as a minimum because our required diameter size is very small it's 0.1173 so 5 eighths inch is greater than 0.1173
Now that, we, now that we've covered the LRFD approach, we're going to take a look at the ASD approach. So first, we're going to calculate the factored load. And again, this is based on ASCE7 load combination. And this is load combination 1. And so since we just have a dead load, it's just going to be equal to the dead load, D. It's 1.0 times D, so it's just D. So that's 251.4 pounds or 0.2514 kips. So our factored uh, tensile loading is 0.2514 kips. And this is essentially going to be our allowable tensile loading as we move on. So now the nominal tensile strength uh, of a th uh, the allowable tensile strength of a threaded part per ASD is equal to the nominal strength divided by the safety factor. So the nominal strength, as we mentioned earlier, is equal to Fn times AB, and we divide by this safety factor. So we just clarify even more, Fnt, which is a nominal tensile stress, times AB divided by the safety factor. So the allowable tensile loading is equal to FNT times AB divided by safety factor. And FM, FNT, based on table J3.2 for threaded parts, is equal to 0 0.75 times the ultimate uh, tensile strength times AB. And the safety factor for this limit state of tensile rupture in ASD is equal to 2.0. And before we move on, just to make sure, uh, we have A36 steel, so the yield strength is equal to 36 KSI, and the ultimate tensile strength is equal to 58 KSI. So we simplify this equation even further, so the allowable tensile loading is equal to 0 0.375 times the ultimate tensile strength times the cross-sectional area. We rearrange this equation to solve for AB, and so we get 0.2514 kips divided by 0 0.375 times 58 KSI. So the required cross-sectional area is equal to 0 0.116 inches squared, and we set that equal to pi d squared over 4. We rearrange this equation and solve for D, where d is equal to 4 times, where d is equal to the square root of 4 times ab divided by pi. So it's equal to 0.1215 inches. This is the minimum required diameter. And again, uh, so to prevent damage during uh, construction, our rods should not be too slender. And since there is no specification requirement, we just go by a common practice, and that's to use a minimum diameter of 5 8 inch diameter. So this is the end of this example. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, please visit our website and subscribe to our newsletter, our, e weekly, uh, our weekly email, so you can stay up to date on our latest engineering content at engineeringexamples.net. And please like our Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash engineeringexamples. Thanks.